Now then, here we go. It's 12 volt turbine, right? And it's got some faults. One of which is the blades are loose. So let's just zoom in. Something's worn or something's not been done up tight. I'll give you a side view of that. There you go. That's not very entertaining, is it? And this is the model. Some bits of it seem to be made quite nicely. But others not. But, as well as that um, blade being loose, the bearings are as grumbly as anything. Can't really hear them. So I'll take the blade off first. And there's an, there's an Allen key in the centre there. But which way would it undo? Well, the nut itself is secured in this hexagon, in this plastic hub. The nut would normally go that way. Is that right? Yeah, you would undo the nut in the direction of rotation. But this hex, this hex key, Allen key, is turning the shaft so it should be the opposite way if we can make any sense out of this I don't know I think that's probably tightening it up That seems to be doing something. I'll just undo that and then come back to you. So that's freed off a bit now. It's actually a nylock nut in there. There we go. So there's the nut. So with that being all shiny there, obviously this has been loose for quite a while. And if we need to do anything with it, we're going to have to shim it out. But, and I hope you can see, the hole itself seems to be worn. We might have to put a bit of thin shin material in there and it seems to be worn well that's quite a sharp edge there now we'll have to work on that one we'll have to measure it but that's the blades off so I don't know whether you can hear this what I'll do is I'll bring the camera real close in and then maybe you'll hear it So those bearings are, oh yeah, it feels like the back bearing has collapsed, that could have uh, destroyed the generator. So where are we? There's four bolts there, Allen keys, so we'll undo that and try and pull that front off. Well that's not bad, that's a bit tighter.
Let's try this one. Not bad. Uh huh. There's always one. So this is supposed to be 400 watts and I remember years ago, we are talking years ago now, we used to make our own turbines and when I went to university with my forestry degree, um, in one of the modules we had to do, I think it was civil and mechanical engineering or something we had to do a presentation and I did one on the turbines that I was building at the time and I actually found that VHS video a number of years ago and converted it to digital and I've uploaded it with a description of uh, so it's like switching between the old footage and talking about what I was doing and all that sort of thing so I'll put a link to that just up here somewhere you might find that interesting it certainly takes me back a while yeah I certainly look a, look a lot younger whoa well that's impressive okay Yeah, I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in. We've got three slip rings there. Okay, so that's the three phases of this alternator. The wiring, the windings itself don't look bad, although the cotton are a bit loose. And there's no back bearing here both of the bearings are in that hub so this is overslung as it were which is a bit rubbish so what we're going to have to do is try and get to and I'm not sure how any of this comes apart we need to disconnect these three wires somehow and then get this in the press and press this rotor out as you can see there's all the magnets that back bearing is really toast I don't want to hang on these wires though so I'm not sure how on earth we're supposed to all of this enclosure here is aluminium which is quite nice um, how are we supposed to get all this lot apart then really we want to drop the this out first this your bearing shaft drop that out then I can get to this block here it's all a bit tricky really so I've undone those wires from the uh, the slip rings and I'll just show you just there hopefully you can see just just in there there were three nuts I undid them and three bolts dropped out and the wires actually come from the back here so it'll probably be a, be a bit of a pain to put all that back together that yaw bearing seems fine and the brushes look okay but it's a strange place to put them because how on earth are you going to get that out it will move a bit but 
You've got to remove this to get to that. That's a bit mad. Hopefully you can see that. Let me just zoom in a bit more. So that's the the brush block there, and the three brushes to go with these three slip rings. Bit bit fiddly. Bit. They've obviously moved everything behind to give room for the the generator. Um. Not designed to be fixed, I, sp I assume. Although this aluminium case is quite nice. Anyway, let's crack on with the rest. So, how are we going to... We can sort of lift this a bit, but it comes to a point where it doesn't want to... Because those magnets are super strong, as I say, it gets to the point where it doesn't doesn't want to lift off anymore. How are we going to do this? I'm not sure. Without damaging the... Oh, there you go. That was a lot easier than I thought. So there we go. But look. They haven't varnished these. Yeah, so you can quite easily get loose wires. So that would want some varnish on it. It's not what you call good winding. So I put this back together. I wa I'll varnish that all twice or three times, just to keep all these wires from moving around, because they're loosely wound, like this, um, and they should be all glued together. Right. So we'll put that somewhere safe so we don't drop anything on it. Now we've got to be careful of these magnets because they're potentially lethal finger trappers. Right, well we've got a we've got a circlet there. But obviously this lot won't come out the front. Maybe that bearing comes out the front. But the shaft we've got to press out first. Which will be a bit entertaining. See there's a circlip in there. There's a ba bearing retainer. Can you see that? Yeah, moving around like mad. So we'll have to get Uncle Harold's press into action and press this out. Um, no, we can't have that nut on there because once it starts going through, it wants to go through that bearing. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, here we go. Dug out the press. This is Uncle Harold's, and if you haven't seen, well, there you go. That didn't take long, did it? Oh. If you haven't seen any of Uncle Harold's videos, I've got a whole playlist. You'll really enjoy them.
see. That's pretty good. Right. Okay. Oh, no wonder. We can't knock it out this way. It's against the shoulder. Yep. A couple of blocks. Right. Quick tidy up. Oh, typical. Pick two blocks of dissimilar sizes. That's going. Okay, that's one variant. That's the spacer. Let me find a block that's a better size. That's a bit better. Right. We don't care about this bearing because it's it's had it anyway. There we go. Two bearings there. One spacer. We need to keep the spacer. Typical. Well, they're actually spinning. That one feels the worst. Let's just hook that out, that seal. So as you can see there, it's not actually rusty. Well, it's starting to go there, but the grease has dried up. And uh, here's the, the rotor and the shaft, and that just slides on there. So look. So a lot of the rock is actually in the interference fit on the bearing, which isn't an interference fit. Not with that one, but with this one, it's nearly there, but it's still a bit slack. So we'll just make good this shaft when we get some bearings for it. And they are uh, 6 2 O three RS and there's the manufacturer is N and F. Yeah. Don't know how good they are or not. But these ones are no good. Right, I'll leave it with you there. Okay, so we're in the workshop. Oh, you got to be really careful of these rare earth magnets. Now that's the bearing that was loose. But I don't think the shaft is damaged. All I can assume is it's a bad bearing. And I've tried this in a race with a file and it seems hard but it's the wrong size, bottom line. So in amongst my bearing collection, I found these two of the right size. And as you can see, they're pretty good. I think that will do. Now the main thing is, that there is a spacer between these two so this nut needs to be real tight to be able to press 
that in a race there against the spacer and to press that in a race against that shoulder there so we can that's not bad it could have been just slightly tighter but I'm not sure I'm not actually going to center punch this shaft we're going to rely on that not being tight enough and of course as we recognized earlier on it wasn't so it may be that we'll have to put a washer behind it or shim the uh, the blade boss out or something like that so I think with these two new bearings well they're probably second hand bearings because they're in my box of bearings miscellaneous assorted um, we can do something now that's got a rubber so that will be want to be on the outside this has got a tin um, seal but that will be fine fine if it's on the inside it's just that one to keep the water out so those two are great we're happy with that lot the next thing to do hang on a minute is to varnish the stator very important that right there we go and I'll just remind you that this varnish is basically well it's a second layer of insulation I don't like that that needs to push back in there but also it glues everything together so you don't get stray coils wandering off you've got to imagine but when that magnet's spinning it's inducing magnetism in these coils so you could possibly get a loose wire being pulled into the spinning rotor and of course then we've got damage and it will soak in amongst all those windings yeah and stop them floating about So this reminds me, to a certain extent, this whole taking this apart. When I was investigating that uh, 24 volt proven turbine that had hit the ground, I did a video on taking the generator apart. Now those generators, the coil is a big donut. It's about this wide. And that's about that sort of size yeah so you've got the coil and then that's fixed and then that next to it on the shaft is a plate with magnets on it and then the other side you've got a plate with magnets on and the shaft is about inch and a quarter inch and a half diameter and I remember somewhere the information was those magnet plates are uh, loctited or glued onto the shaft they're keyed and glued and then there's a big nut so trying to get that magnet plate off was um, it was gaining experience so that's why I did the video basically you have to heat the shaft and 
the center boss up and I noticed that as soon as the uh, the paint started to go white then with a puller in place you could start to pull the uh, the magnet plate off but prior to that there's no way it would move uh, so um, anyway I'll put a link to that video again because it's quite you know it's in the heat of the moment it's quite interesting but how many people will actually need to take a rotor off a proven turbine considering proven went bust quite a long time ago and um, they got taken over or well, they got bought up by some insulation company and I don't think they make them it was just some sort of green wash there you go that's the right term oh yeah we're doing green things but actually we're not we're just pretending but I didn't towards the end I really didn't like the the proven company uh, and they it's like all these turbines though they never do what they say they're going to do unless it's in the absolute optimum conditions but having said that the proven turbine we've got apart from the repair to one of the spring plates has been quite reliable and it chugs around um, the main bearings are greasable but because we've got so much solar then effectively what happens is I switch the turbine off for maybe six months of the year I just figure there's no point it going round just wearing the bearings out uh, when we don't know need its output so I'll just switch it off come the winter though it makes a contribution Right, that'll do. We'll just let that dry, harden up. It's just an insurance policy. So I'll get back to you when this lot's dried and I'm ready to put everything back together. <laughs> so that's the end of part one of the turbine repair. I was going to do the whole thing as one video but then when it got beyond an hour I thought it was high time to split it into two or maybe even three parts but um, so you know the other one is in the can as it were waiting for the last bit of editing and whatnot when I was down the scrapyard recently you all recognize what that is I picked up another of these because it was there um, and that of course is the fan out of a fan assist oven which I've used for cooling uh, one of our SMA inverters and that all links in with a video I did about extending inverter life so you know it's very quiet very steady but it just creates that draft up the back of the inverter and of course, those of you who remember, it's just run from a timer. So when the inverter is working, as in from about, well, it starts about 7 in the morning at currently, but then we're in August, but the timer starts at 10 and finishes at about 4. So the, uh, the inverter is generating. So we're not actually drawing any any power off the mains to run this, if you get what I mean. So um, the other thing I picked up was this. Now this is a an LED fluorescent light tube replacement, and let me just see if I can spin this round. That end there is mashed. The end's been ripped off, but that end, there is no electrical connection. 
on these ones, according to the label, there is only a connection on that end. I'll just zoom down a minute. So here's the label. Focus. Come on. See, it goes input end. And it is 28 watts power consumption. And as you see there with the drawing, that is for your standard fluorescent, and that is for the LEG tube. You only put mains to one end. So for that purpose, I removed that end, just flicked it off, and stripped back the wires. So in here, let's just zoom out a little bit. So in here, what you have, it looks like a little driver, just in there. I don't want to pull it out too far. So that'll be the driver. And now we've got two input cables. We could hang this anywhere. It doesn't need to be in the case. It can be on a couple of hooks. So we'll just, um, I'll just show this running. So we've just got the quick test here. One goes to live. The other goes to neutral. Okay. Contact. And there we go. And it's working. And where it's just had a bash, there's one section there that's not working. But we're not really worried about that, are we? This is LED lighting and it's quite bright. So there you go, hope that you enjoyed that extra bit, it's a bit more information and interest and it's recycling, you know, in sheds and stuff like that, that's perfectly fine, isn't it? I will catch up with you soon, please uh, do the like business and subscribe if you already haven't done, I think that makes sense, um, cheers for now, bye!